Gareth, for your insights there and sharing the rise and ongoing success of NOAA. Um, I'm sure you've generated some um, interest in the, the platform and what you have to offer there uh, in the crowd. For a final discussion this morning, um, we're going to stay looking focused on the future. Um, we're going to look at the broader landscape, um, not just podcasts, but um, the future of audio in general. With us in that discussion today, um, our podcast producer, Taz Kelleher, Wolfgang Digital's Fergus Ryan, director at Edelman UK in Ireland, Fiona Hodgins, and of course, Eric Newsom. <laughs> Eric, we might start with you. Um, so, I'd like to get your thoughts so far on what you've heard this morning and uh, if you can give us a little bit of um, an idea where you place Ireland's podcast arena in comparison with the US. Well, I, I, I spoke about that a little bit earlier. Um, you know, uh, it is, listen to the other discussions, um, uh, I, I see a lot of things that are directionally strike me as the right type of thinking because so, like, I'm, I just, earlier this summer, I left Audible and started my own company, and a lot of people have asked me why I'm doing it now, when a number of years ago you had Gimlet, which is a well-known independent podcasting company, and Pineapple Street, and some others had a, a couple years head start, and, and I said that the reason I wanted to wait longer to start my own was I could watch what everybody else did, double down on the things they did are smart, and avoid the mistakes as much as possible. And I think that the benefit that you have here um, with your podcast industry is you're in a very similar position. If you can watch what people are doing in the US and the UK and say, I like that, I'm gonna find my own version of how to do that. And I've watched all these mistakes happen and I'm not gonna repeat them myself. Like for example, my company, even though venture capitalists are throwing money at podcasting, and I mean literally, when I left Audible, I must have had 15 people reach out to me offering me funding, and I turned it all down. Because um, it is, uh, with venture capitalists come venture expectations. And um, when I talk to people at the podcast companies that started up years before, they spent half their time managing their investors, and rather than making something. And so, so the advantage you're in is that you have the ability to kind of take the, uh, a more measured look, and come in and, and avoid a lot of mistakes. And what I've heard earlier is a, a lot of very positive things that I think are, are living that without realizing it. Okay, it's great to hear. Um, we've we, we've heard a lot about uh, digital listening devices and platforms um, throughout the morning, um, and you know, as an experienced podcaster in the podcasting arena, I know you don't like that word either. Um, but you know. Where, what, what place do you think that current leading providers and the listening devices will be in about five years' time? Are you seeing that we will be using the same devices? Do you think that they will become obsolete? Are we in best place even in that arena to you know, latch onto the new technology that we'll see coming down the tracks? Right. Well, if you look five years ago, who was dominating audio listening? It was Pandora. And uh, all the um, Apple Music didn't exist. Spotify barely existed, didn't exist in the US. Um, uh, SoundCloud was a very different organization than it was five years ago. Um, and so everything has changed in five years and now people look at Pandora as being kind of like the, uh, it's on life support. Even though it's still a huge company, people don't look at it as being that progressive. And so the thing I would say is in five years, it's all gonna change again. In, one of the things I, you know, I'm grateful for having spent three years inside of Amazon because it was kind of like being paid really well to get an MBA or some advanced <laughs> degree. And, and um, one of Jeff Bezos' principles, which I actually have held on to and will hold on to for a long time, is the um, people who win long term focus on things that don't change. So with Amazon, they focus on great selection, great price and great customer service. And customer service in, includes getting things quickly to people. And whenever new opportunities and new technologies come along, they always assess, does it forward any of those three things? Because those never change. And so when you're looking at audio, 
you have, you, you ask yourself, what doesn't change in audio? What doesn't change in audio is pe two things. People want things that they enjoy listening to, and they want no friction between their interest and their actual consumption. I don't want to have to think about things. I don't want to have to get, figure out how to do this or complicated instructions. And so I think the winners in five years will be the people who remove the friction and create the good stuff. Excellent, thanks so much for that. Uh, Fiona, I might turn to you next. Hi, how are you? Um, so from the marketing perspective, you know, why does the question of the future of audio mean so much to you? I think the question of the future of audio actually really matters to any good marketeer out there. And it's because marketing at its most basic is about building relationships with human beings and things and things aren't sentient, they're not thinking, they're not human. So voice and audio becomes really, really interesting then because it is so intimate and it does help us process and build relationships. And for me, there's kind of three reasons why it does. It is the way we learn. So of all the ways we communicate, Speech is by far the most efficient, most effective, and easiest way to convey what you believe, what you desire, what you want. If it is one of the ways that we know that we learn, you just have to think about a baby who spends 10 months in a mother's stomach and hears her heartbeat, hears her voice, hears her stomach rumble, and then comes out and equates comfort and safety with those same noises. And the thing that has made that connection, that learning, is voice and audio. And it's also so much more efficient a way to communicate. Like, you know, um, we spend time media training people and we talk about the fact that conveying a sentence, you've got, you know, you've got three seconds of word, but we're communicating three times faster by speech than we are by written words. <laughs> but I think most importantly, if you're interested in marketing, it's important because voice and audio has personality and personality connects and it builds really good relationships and those relationships become credible and trusted and most importantly persuasive and they're the kind of things that we're trying to build. So as a tool, I think it's really interesting and anyone who is not thinking about it should be thinking about it. Thanks so much. Um, so we're talking about this relationship, you know, and the strength of voice and how that actually creates a relationship with, I guess, inanimate, inanimate objects. Um, and spar smart speakers, they're, they are reaching new heights in, t in terms of voice recognition. Um, do you have a, your own smart speaker at home? I do. And um, I'm new to the smart speaker, so Alexa's my new friend. <laughs> and I'm trying to learn skills. And, you know, I'm trying to choose the skills that matter because my life's complicated enough, you know, and I know of all the skills that I learn, I'm probably gonna use 10% of them. But, um, and I kind of have an eye for what brands are doing. And, you know, I just, I thought what Tide are doing in terms of developing a skill. So Tide, it's, it's detergent, it's, it's actually not interesting. But they have found this micro moment in a skill in Alexa whereby I can ask Alexa, if you know I'm in the kitchen cooking, I'm a messy cook, I'm not a good cook, I'm an enthusiastic cook. <laughs> and you know, it's messy. And they have developed not just an app, because you know, I've got enough apps on my phone, I'm not gonna go into it to find out how to remove a stain. I'm just gonna ask Alexa, and she's going to get me the salt and the water and the vinegar, and I'm gonna do it while I'm in the kitchen in that moment when it matters. And I think those moments when brands can be useful, when brands can be really relevant, that's when the kind of possibilities of speech and voice and audio become really interesting. Fascinating. It's a, lo it's a lovely way of looking at it. Um, Sharing too much. <laughs> yeah. uh, Taz, I'm, I'm going to come to you next. Um, so, you know, you're self confessed um, d digital native and di podcast lover. You fell in love with podcasts um, before you even left college and you went off to, to, to study that, etc. So, um, I mean, we've, we've, we've heard Fiona's personal experience. So, um, how has audience you know, taken over your life, you know, and for you? Um, Will it completely replace radio for yourself? Um, 
Yeah, I, I kind of, I've always loved radio and growing up I always loved radio. But when I found podcasting, it seemed like this, this new form of radio that just made sense to me because it's highly specialized. You can pick a podcast on any particular thing. And I really like how personalized it is when you're listening to a podcast. When you have your headphones on and it's you and your trusted host, you feel like you're in this moment that nothing else in the world matters. Um, which I, I, I also think that radio is not going to die. I, I don't think that podcasting is going to take over radio. But I think it is a very different thing. And I think that podcasting can be so personalized to each individual listener. Um, the power of audio is, is incredible. And I've learned so much from podcasting. I know so many random facts about the most random things in the world from podcasting, um, which I really think is invaluable because I'm young and I'm, I'm, I'm learning all this random facts of knowledge growing up in the last six years through podcasting, um, which, which makes me knowledgeable to you know, a greater age. Kind Pub of. quizzes. Huh? Pub quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, and I think there's, there's the power of audio beyond podcasting to talk about the future of podcasting um, is audio books and audio articles. There's a new London-based app called Curio that brings um, professional voiceover artists reading articles from the Financial Times and The Economist, um, curated articles to suit you, uh, read by a professional voiceover artist. So it's kind of a new way of consuming news that's not just podcasting, but it's also audio-based. Um, and just like you were saying, you can do it in your kitchen while you're cooking because your ears are vacant for a lot of the day when a lot of people are saying they don't have time to sit down and read a newspaper. Your ears are vacant when you're traveling for the most part. Your ears are vacant when you're cooking dinner. So I think the power of audio in that way is super powerful. Absolutely. I think we, we spoke earlier on about um, that intimacy and how it had um, health benefits because it kept you running for longer when you weren't mm. finished your podcast. Yeah. Um, but there is that, that connection and you can do it wherever. You can be cooking or, or running or, or whatever. There is that time. It's for the busy person. Um, Fergus, as a podcaster, producer um, like Taz, uh, what do you think is next for uh, the podcast in terms of content? In terms of content, I think it, it, it just has to get better. Um, like the, the listenership in Ireland for podcasts is something like 38% of Irish people listen to a podcast every month. Um, if we think about the growth of that, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to go to 60, 70, 80% for podcasts to make an impact. Like if we think about back in the, in the late 90s, uh, the, the big exciting thing was that it's going to be 99% data down our phone line. And that was, oh my God, because we were still using phones as phones. And then it was the internet. And then in the late sort of 2010s, it was there's going to be 80% of internet traffic is going to be video. There's nobody really saying that about audio. There's no one saying, well, you know, 90% of internet traffic is going to be audio, but they don't have to. And it's, it's basically echoing everything everyone has pretty much said, that it's down to the content, great content, character, voice, uh, story. Um, and the intimacy, which Taz was just touching on there, like a good example I can give you is I, I did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for 10 years, and Joe Rogan, uh, he was one of the first kind of big podcasters. He's got something like 30 to 40 million downloads a month. Um, he's a black belt in Bra Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So in my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu club, there was guys who uh, used Shroom Tech Sport and uh, nootropics like Alpha Brain because Joe Rogan spent the first 10 minutes of his podcast talking about these products. Uh, some of the lads took up archery because Joe Rogan took up archery. You know, and, and th they were host read ads. So that was really powerful stuff. So if that had been a dynamically inserted ad, maybe, I probably would have skipped over them. Like, the, the lads might have skipped over it. But because Joe Rogan said it. Yeah. And then, then he, he has, like, three hours of conversation with widely different people. Some of them, like, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's an astrophysicist. Like, Joe Rogan has done more for science in Ireland than maybe 12 years of education. Because <laughs> you have guys on the mat before Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I, I have no interest in that stuff. Um, but they're telling you about the universe and, yeah, this is great stuff. So that's, that's I think, pretty much what everyone has said. That's the power of the audio. So I, I think, the, so what's the future of, of podcasting in Ireland? It's the content just has to get better. If you look at, you look at the iTunes top 10 for Ireland, 
at least half are probably US programs. They're not Irish. I know, I know Carl Henry's Lay of Healthcare uh, charts well, Blind Boy charts well. I think it's called ICALS, which is I'm not, not in that demographic thereafter, but they chart for But every, uh, it's um, TED Radio Hour, How Stuff Works, Joe Rogan. You know, so there's absolutely no reason why Irish content can't be the whole of the top 10. I think that's what we really need to get really good at. Okay, brilliant. Oh, you know, go ahead, Rick. Build up this, this, as you look at this, uh, how things happen in the US, they happen later in the UK and Australia and, and will happen in Ireland. Several years ago, the top, the top charting in iTunes were all radio broadcasters who um, were porting their programs over to podcasts. And right now, and, and obviously that's much different now, it's completely different now. Um, and if you look in the UK now, you're starting to see many more podcast native productions starting to chart really well, and the, the legacy, the, the BBC and the, the other broadcasters starting to slip down in prominence, and I think that you're absolutely right. It's, that's the direction it will head, and that'll be the first sign that that's happening. Okay, thanks for that input, Eric. Um, uh, so, Taz, I mean, you know, we're talking there, we need to, we need to improve the, the, the quality of content. Um, and, you know, there, is there a danger then that we know, as, as you said earlier, Eric, people have 20 or 30 minutes of their time and they think they could just throw out a podcast. So, you know, there's a danger of too much content, and too, like too low quality. Are we in danger of talking up the future of audio too much? Do you know what? That was actually a question I was going to put to Eric earlier, kind of in a round.